Hello guys, welcome to Daddy Share Space and welcome to my channel. So this video has the potential to bring in a whole different genre of viewers and I just want to acknowledge that up front. So here on Daddy Share Space, I have primarily been talking about some degree of tech, doing woodworking videos, doing my yard, just basically do-it-yourself type of stuff. In this particular video, I am branching out a little bit more, sharing a little bit more about my personal experiences here uh, in America as an American consumer. And this leg of my channel, Daddy Share Space, is going to focus on technology, gaming, electronics, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that stuff, go ahead and uh, enjoy. And if not, I understand. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not quite as prepared as I would like to be for it or else I would be doing different, you know, B-roll graphics, that type of thing. Well, not really graphics, but B-roll because I'm still learning DaVinci Resolve and learning the fusion uh, part of the program so that I can do, you know, like slide ins and slide outs. But hopefully we'll get to that in the next 10 or 15 years. But back to the topic at hand. So this video. I believe I'm going to title it what I think Microsoft should have done and so this is going to be probably a little bit of a long video more of like a podcast type video but I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, let me just go ahead and start from the beginning so back when the original iPhone came out I uh, right now if you're actually watching this I have an iPhone 3G this is the second iPhone ever made. I did purchase the original iPhone. And when I purchased that many, many moons ago, uh, it introduced me to the Apple ecosystem. Now, prior to that, I was using PDA phones, uh, Windows-based PDA phones that I would use in my line of work. My profession is a registered nurse. And I would download programs like Pepid. There was another program similar to that, which gave you a lot of fast facts in regards to like responding to certain medical uh, conditions and emergencies, right? It would give you like drugs and dosages on particular medications, showing you side effects so you could see it all at a glance. And it was very useful to have a smartphone type device to carry around to be able to have access to that data. It just was real live data that you would have access to as a registered nurse. So, um, but in getting back to the topic, so I purchased the iPhone and then I moved on to purchasing the Apple iBook, which I have here. I have some of my props right here on the table. However, I'm choosing to use only one camera because I'm trying to focus on what I'm saying more so than think about a bunch of camera stuff right here. So this is the Apple iBook G4. This is the model that was made prior to them going to Intel. Obviously now they're on uh, Apple Silicon. There you go, that's the laptop. So obviously now they're on Apple Silicon, so they're way beyond the Intel uh, version of the Mac. Now what I got, so let me back up. Let me just, this may be an introduction to my technology story, so I may not actually get to the part where I said what Microsoft, what I think Microsoft should do. So maybe I'll change the title to uh, my tech I don't know, something about technology and my um, pathway going from Apple to uh, Microsoft and then back again and so on and so forth. So what I got from this original iPhone here and that iBook was a connectivity where I would be able to take photos with my phone, take videos with my phone. And of course, this is old news now because it's every day, all day. But it was a new thing back then where you would take photos and videos with your device and it would go up to the cloud and it would be accessible on your laptop. It was, you know, in my opinion, like ahead of its time. So um, I really enjoyed that experience that I had in the early days with Apple. Now, I ran into a problem. So I was a travel nurse back then. And so it was very nice to be able to walk around with a camera in your pocket, that being your smartphone, and taking photos and passing those photos on to the cloud and being able to access those along with music, right? You got the iPod that used to hold music. And of course, the new, the older iPhones used to hold um, music as well, you know, like with iTunes, so on and so forth. Well, so 
um, I decided that I wanted higher quality videos because at that time coming from the Midwest I was on the West Coast I believe in San Francisco at the time and I was seeing all kinds of new uh, places and sites and stuff like that and I wanted to share some of these memories with people from back home and uh, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth I wanted a little bit more fidelity so I decided to purchase my first HD camera and if you guys are familiar with uh, the now out of business Circuit City, I purchased this right here. This is a Sony HD camera. It's got the, what is it, the AVHD, yeah, AVCHD technology. This is a 720 uh, camcorder. It kind of still works actually. Uh, and I purchased this and I would be walking around San Francisco making recordings with this particular camera and I enjoyed it a great deal. Now, I was fairly new to my technological journey, and so I didn't know I was going to have a problem until I plugged this into my iBook. And what I learned was that Apple did not support the AVC HD technology that Sony was producing, which was a 720 camera. And I made the choice to get the Sony over a Canon back then because at that time, Sony or Canon was still kind of on a lower, I think 480p. They weren't they weren't pushing HD at that time, and so Canon was more compatible with Apple at that time. But the cutting edge technology that Sony was using back then, which was only 720p, you know, which is paltry now, was uh, only I was only able to get that footage off through a Windows PC, which always seems. To seem to push the hardware envelope forward and so what I ended up doing was purchasing a gateway I don't know if you remember that country or that company gateway PC laptop and that led me down the path of kind of making a split from the Apple ecosystem so one of the things that Apple did way back then because if you look at this iBook that I have here right on the back it has a usable replace uh, a user removable battery so that if the battery went bad you could actually just go buy another one and put it install it and then go on about your business well back then is when Apple started to advertise and talk about you know we're gonna do a, a sealed device we're gonna treat a laptop like a smartphone where basically it no longer has the ability to have the battery swapped out by the end user now for me, the best analogy that I felt back then was that basically they was making a laptop into essentially a glorified um, paper plate. You know, like those, you have different ranges of paper plates. You have the paper plates that if they get wet, they get all tore up. They're like more made out of paper. And then you have the ones that have, that are either plastic or have some kind of coating that stand up a little bit better, but they're still disposable plates. And that's what I felt like Apple was doing with the laptop and I was adamantly against that and you could go back in the earlier versions of phones and you know like Androids and all of that in their early inception even Windows they had user replaceable batteries well you know the jokes on us because now none of these phones have user replaceable batteries so um, but going back again touching on the you know trying to stay on track with the story I moved over to the Windows laptop and all of those uh, things and then uh, many years later, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or if you remember, App or Microsoft came out with the Lumia 920. I owned that phone. I purchased that phone. I bought that phone, and I was very excited about that. That was around the time of Windows 8, towards the tail end of Windows 8, moving into Windows 10. And with Windows 8, uh, well, first and foremost, let me not go too deep into Windows 8. What I saw in that actual what I saw in the Windows Phone was the ability to be able to have that Apple experience that I had had so many years prior with a Windows platform which would give me the ability to use more modern technology because Apple was known back then for basically using like last year's tech or several years ago tech and kind of moving innovation slowly I mean when I bought the original iPhone it did not record video now people hacked the original iPhone and was able to get it to record video so that means it wasn't that it wasn't capable but what they did is they introduced the iPhone 3G to provide 
um, a reason for upgrade. And, you know, we see this trait going still to this day where basically not only Apple, but all of these companies are holding back functionality of devices so that you will buy the next one in line. But that's a story for another day. So before I go further with the Lumia 920, I need to make a note mentally so I can get back to that. Um, I went off on this journey down Android, right? And I had bought the Motorola Atrix. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that phone, but it was an amazing phone and it was ahead of its time. So the Motorola Atrix was a smartphone. It had a user replaceable battery and it also had several accessories. It had a car dock, it had a laptop dock, it had a like an audio video dock. And these docks gave it the ability, you would plug the phone into like say the laptop dock and then you had a laptop experience with that device. You could take it and plug it into like the audio visual dock and then that audio visual dock would plug into your TV and you could interact with the phone on your TV. And then of course the auto dock is kind of self-explanatory. You would plug it into that and it was essentially, uh, you know, uh, it had all these different accessories and tricks that gave the phone more functionality. It made the phone like the center of your electronic life. And it, I thought it was a very amazing and intuitive design because not only did it have the functionality of like, you know, your basic smartphone where you could take videos, take photos, but now I could use that same device to power like a dummy shell of a laptop and be able to get a bigger uh, tapestry, if you will, to work with, with whatever was on my phone. Unfortunately, one day when I was uh, coming home, I dropped that phone and it fell face down onto a tile floor. And when I took it in with the insurance that I had on my phone, um, they were unable to give me another Motorola Atrix. So what ended up happening is I think they gave me the, they offered me the Atrix 2, which had none of the functionality, none of the compatibility. Uh, Motorola basically abandoned every last one of those accessories that they had made for that particular phone, which was a bummer. And so it was at that time that I fast forward to where I stopped with the Lumia 920. That is when the Lumia 920 was announced. And I was excited about that because what I thought was that I would be able to get that experience that I got with my original iPhone and iBook where I would take photos and videos with my phone. They would automatically sync up with my computer and I would have that integration that would go top to bottom. Microsoft had their Zoom software that managed music. They had their movie uh, integration, the Groove, all these different apps that they had on the Microsoft side of things. And I just thought that that ecosystem was going to flourish and blow up. Well, so I bought that, not Louis 920. It had, um, it was a polycarbonate body. I can't remember the screen size, but basically it had a polycarbonate body. It had wireless charging, which was one of the industry first with that. And um, I bought the phone home. It At that time, it had, it, I think it was a Nokia design. It had very good, um, you know, photo quality, video quality for that season. At that time, I think Lumia, Nokia, they, they had kind of like, a little bit of an edge on the rest of the competition when you start talking about camera hardware. So after uh, I picked that up, you know, I'm trying to pair it up with my gateway laptop, thinking it's gonna be essentially the same as what I had before. Unfortunately, if any of you owned a Windows phone, you know that that was not the case. It was a very disjointed and very, um, it, it, it just wasn't a smooth process. There were certain basic features that were not available on the phone that you would assume would have been, stuff like cut and paste and so on and so forth. That integration between the apps that were inside of the phone seemed to be very foreign to the apps that was in your Windows Dex desktop. They didn't seem, as meaning Microsoft, didn't seem to create a good flow on the back end to where everything would integrate and sync up and, and connect the way that Apple had done in their system years prior. So um, that was around the time when they started talking about, well, actually, what I, one of the things I did during that time, because it was Windows 8, I ended up picking up one of these. I don't know if you guys remember that commercial with the girls dancing or whatever. This is a 
uh, Surface RT device, one of the original ones or whatever. It was powering up a while ago, but I think the last couple times that I tried to charge it, it is no longer functioning. But it was. And uh, with this particular device, they sold it. it. This is not the Intel version. This is the ARM version. So this is Windows RT. It had Windows 8 on it. It was one of the original surfaces. And so, you know, you, you could understand why I thought that there was going to be this integration because you had the, the iPhone, you had the iPad, you had, um, you know, Mac laptops and how that integrated um, environment worked. I thought it was going to be exactly the same thing except for in the Windows platform. So, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But then Microsoft really took a turn and they started talking about and pushing Windows 10. And that was supposed to be the, the future of everything. They was going to have the Windows Universal uh, platform applications. They started advertising all kinds of different cool technology and, and stuff like that. They advanced the iPad. Or not the iPad, sorry. They advanced the, um, the Surface Pro. And I did purchase, I think I have the Surface Pro 4, if, you, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. And um, everything was just supposed to get better. They talked about universal UWP applications that would run across devices like this right here, which is the Microsoft HoloLens, which is now, uh, I think they just stopped support for the second version of that. Now, um, so anyway, so I thought, I envisioned a platform, especially with the UWP. Now, I'm not a computer coder, so I don't know the underneath underpinnings of how this all would have worked. But I thought that you would take something like uh, a Windows phone, which I have two here in, in my shop somewhere or in my uh, office here somewhere. I just was unable to find them for the video. And I, what I have, I, end, end, I, ended up turn, I ended up turning in my Lumia 920 because something was wrong with that. I can't remember what. But I traded it in and I got a Lumia 950 and I also bought the Lumia 950 XL because I really bought into the fact that Windows 10 was going to be like this operating system to rule them all. I was thinking uh, so many different uh, crazy things that the integration would have bought being that you have, you know, you've got holographic computers, you've got laptops, you've got touch screens, you've got tablets, you've got phones. This whole ecosystem I thought was just going to really blow up and uh, do something really big in the industry. And unfortunately, we already know how that situation ends because we're now in 2024 and I'm talking about the past. So I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna uh, stop this video right here. And this is gonna be like the backdrop of how I got from Apple all the way up to the uh, Microsoft platform so you kind of get an idea of how I came into using Windows and getting into that and I bought like many uh, Windows fanboys if you will into the Windows 10 dream of course which has been dead for quite some time so in the next episode of this so that this video is not too long I will pick up the story here and I will let you know what I think Windows or Microsoft should have done Thank you for taking time to watch the video. I'll see you in my next one.